So thus far, we've been doing pretty basic queries, nothing too complicated. However, when you take your midterm exam, if you're watching this video for class, it's likely going to give you harder problems. Uh, so let's get start working and in, getting into some more complicated criterion for SQL statements to show you a little bit more about what your exam will look like. So let's start here with number 12. All right, write a SQL statement that will find in place who make, who make 20,000 or more but no more than 80,000, so between will work for that, who have a good performance rating, as well as anyone who works in the Miami office. So it looks like they have to, they want two things, people who either make, people who make between 20 and 80 and have a good performance rating, or regardless of performance rating or salary, anyone who works in the Miami office. Okay, that's how you would read and interpret that. All right, back here. <clears throat> Let's paste that. We've got order by salary, too. We'll keep that in mind. So display first name, last name. Let's just go ahead and grab these. That makes it easier. And we're going to order by salary. OK. So select those things, although we'll keep the capitalization correct. doesn't matter in every um, SQL processor out there. Uh, in fact, it might not matter on this one, but it does matter on some. So it's not. A, it's a good habit to just capitalize everything or treat it case sensitive. All right, so we're going to need some joins here for sure. And we know we're going to want to order by salary. That was at the end. And we're going to need some where clause in a bit. But it's okay. We'll start right here. So I can delete the parts of this that I've completed so far. That might be one way to save yourself some time as you're trying to go through these quickly on the exam. Okay. <clears throat> so let's uh, take care of our joins first. From employee inner join we'll start with um, position this time I guess uh, on employee dot position ID equals position dot position ID so now employee and position have become a single table or single view which we're going to enter join to location on and we just need to know, even though I'm saying they've become a single view, we still have to know how location is related to these two tables. There is no relationship between position and location, so we can't say uh, on position dot location ID because there is no location ID in position. Again, this is where you have to know what the ERD looks like or the data schema looks like in order to write these queries. But there is a location ID in employee location dot location. I, oh, I always do that down there. There we go. Okay, we've got our joins taken care of. Now we're ready to handle the criterion. So I'll start with the first one. Where we make 20,000 or more, but no more than 80,000. So that includes both ends. So we can say where uh, salary between 20,000 and 80,000. Um, and they have to also work in that Miami office. So we're going to say uh, location Miami is going to be found in location city equals Miami. All right, now here's where students start to make some mistakes. They see the next part, the next requirement is that it, they want, um, uh, oh, sorry, no, uh, hold on, I got them mixed up. They have to make between that amount, between those two amounts, and they have to have a performance rating of good. Performance. Okay. So it also says, um, or, or also in the same results, return anyone where uh, location city equals Miami. So here's what most students will do. Let me delete this out of here now. They'll write it just like this. You can move that down to so get some room. And they'll run it and they'll say, OK, I got it. My query's done. But let's look at the problem here. Let's make sure all of our results actually fit this criteria. Here's Martin, who uh, meets these two criteria. He's between those and that one. That's right. Uh, let's see here. Um, is there someone who makes between those amounts? Performance rating is average. Okay, and works in Miami. That one works. Uh, let's see here. Well, oh, here we go. <clears throat> oh, no, no data. That one works as well. 
All right, we got lucky in this data set. <laughs> Here, here's how this, here's how this works. Uh, an and is processed before an or. So, uh, in this case, it worked out because we wanted them to meet both these criteria or that criteria. But what if the question said something different? What if it said they need to make between 20 and 80,000 and they need to either have a performance rating of good or work in Miami, meaning this criteria is mandatory, but then they have to only meet one of those two criteria to be returning our results. If that's what the question asked, then this doesn't work, even though it looks like it should be written the same. So in that case, we would have someone who, uh, here we go, here's an, I know, let's say, uh, let's say, good, I know that one still worked. Oh, right here, this last one, Bill Marlin. Okay, Bill does work in Miami, but he doesn't make between 20 and 80,000. He makes more than 80,000. So it's returning data that we wouldn't want if that's the way the question were worded. The way the question was worded, this all worked out fine. But let's say you wanted it to where they only met, only had to meet one of these two criteria, but everyone had to meet that criteria. How would you do it? Well, you would do that by putting parentheses around these two criteria. Because then, and this one has to always be true no matter what, and then only one of these two has to be true. If we ran it that way, we'll lose Bill Marlin there at the bottom. Yep, he's gone now. So, because this question was worded the way it was, it worked out and we didn't need any parentheses. However, just be aware that you sometimes may need to use parentheses to force that an OR requirement sticks together. Let's stop this one here and we'll give you some other examples.